My name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Pharma Insights. Uh, we're here at the Biotech Showcase uh, in San Francisco to meet in the runs uh, in parallel with the JP Morgan meeting where all the, uh, the movers and shakers, uh, the great and the good of pharma and biotech uh, get together once a year at the beginning of the year. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Zami Eberman, who is the uh, uh, Chairman and CEO of uh, Pluristem uh, uh, Therapeutics, which is a Israeli-based stem cell company, uh, but quoted on, on Nasdaq. So, uh, thanks for joining us. Stem cells, okay, a few years ago, stem cells was actually the kind of the hottest thing, everybody was like, talking about it, and then it's kind of gone into the shadow recently, as everybody's got more excited about immuno-oncology. So, um, you know, what's been going on in this, in, in, in the shadows, what's been going on in the stem cell uh, space? I think that the immune therapy gives the evidence that stem cell therapy will be the next step. And I'll tell you why. In order to claim that you represent the next generation biological product, you have to have significant impact on patients. Right. With the stem cell therapy, we didn't prove it yet. With the immune therapy, we have some proof. And because of that, the world is crazy about immune therapy yeah. because we see significant improvement in pa patient uh, quality of life and so on. I assume same will happen with stem cell because not everything is related to immune therapy, not everything is related to cancer. You have many other disorders that we are suffering and uh, there is a still unmet need. Right. So I strongly believe that the evidence that stem cell, even though they are behind now, that would be in the front line later on. Right. Now, you raised some money um, last year, about $17 million. So, so clearly, you, you were still able to get some share of voice. What was it that you were telling investors that you were going to use that money for? That we are planning to complete our existing studies and we raise the money to open new direction, new horizon to new product. Yeah. Just this morning we announced a new product has been cleared uh, by the FDA to start clinical studies right. and we'll probably elaborate on that later. Okay, so, so yeah, so if you could actually talk about the, what the Pluristem approach is in, in terms of what, you know, what, where you derive your stem cells from in the first place and then if you could talk about some of the sort of clinical programs you already have in place. We purify stem cells from the placenta after birth, so no ethical issues involved in the purification of those cells. Not only that, the placenta is unique immunological characteristic, a unique immunological characteristic, and because of that, you can inject the cells without any med. So it's pure allogeneic of the shelf product. Right. We have a few programs running. The first one is uh, treating with uh, critical limb ischemia, which is the end stage of diabetic complication. Yeah. People suffering from that will face amputation unless treated, and we have some evidence that the product is ready to go and uh, can help those patients. We have been approved recently into the adaptive pathway, meaning that we can approve the CLI product in Europe after phase two, the right. same as in Japan. And we hope that American agencies uh, will move into that direction, so we'll have a product ready to go to market in 2018. Okay, so, so what sort of, what, what um, sort of level of uh, proof of principle have you already uh, demonstrated? We demonstrated the uh, efficacy in three clinical studies, two critical limb ischemia and one in muscle injury associated with hip replacement. Right. We injected the cells to the hip affected by the operation and we demonstrated 500% improvement of the muscle force six months after the <laughs> operation. Not only that, it was manifested uh, with improve in the muscle volume and other characteristics of those patients. The, the advantage of that the people will be recovering earlier, can go back to business earlier, and will strengthen the muscle force, so will uh, be better to business. And the third indication we are in is hematopoietic deficiency, that the product has been approved today. Yeah. It's from the placenta, but different characteristics. And the goal of the product is to be involved in bone marrow deficiencies following bone marrow transplantation. People that suffer from cancer usually undergo bone marrow transplantation. And when it does not a graft, then the PLX R18, our second product, come in place. We can inject the cells after the failure of the bone marrow transplantation and to initiate a recovery process in which the three blood lineages will be recovered and the patient will go back to normal life. Right. So, so, so you know, if your therapeutic approach works, what, you know, what, what are sort of the advantages? I mean, what are sort of the of patients or payers going to sort of see that 
is different from uh, conventional approaches? First of all, they will bring health to those patients. You talked before about the immune therapy. It's very expensive therapy, even though effective. With our case, we use the placenta, we use unique uh, technology to expand yeah. our cells, so the cells cost to the patient will be reasonable. Yeah. And we will save money to the health system and improve the quality of life of those patients. That's the idea behind allogeneic compared to autologous, which is the yeah. used today in the very other field. Right, so it's because these stem cells are sort of universal or they, they can be given to anybody, the economics you think are going to be um, appropriate or uh, attractive? I think that that's the main issue because what actually we do with our product, cells are injected into the patient, yeah. last about a month, six weeks in the patient body and during yeah. that time interact with the patient body and secrete a cocktail protein right. to initiate self-healing process. Right. So you inject it once and they do the work. Compared to other products that you have to do right. a daily injection and so on. So at the end of the day, you inject it once, follow the patient after six months and you see the, the result. So we strongly believe that one administration, two administration of PLX cells will be advantages to those patients. And, and will the, sort of the treatments, uh, will they have to take place in sort of specialist uh, centers or is this no. something that can be done? In you the, can in do it even at home. Our installation office, it's intramuscular administration. Right. So standard needle and syringe, yeah. injected to the muscle and then the process started so it can be out of office uh, right. treatment and so on. Okay. We have, an, even, we have a project with the American NIH yeah. in which we took PLX cells to be used in case of radiation catastrophe as a countermeasure for radiation uh, damage. Right. In that case, the idea is the same. Cells will be delivered to the field and then people will use them by using simple IM injection, intramuscular injection, and generating the recovery of the affected bone. All right. So, in terms of, sort of commercialization approach, so you, I mean, what is your business model? Are you, are you looking to you know, find partners for these or will you actually be a, a fully commercial company yourself? Depend on the size of the market. We have, uh, for example, an application which is a uh, uh, bone marrow failure. Yeah. Bone marrow failure, it's about 10 to 20,000 patients in the world, so we can do it by ourselves. On the other end, we have CLI, you have more, more than 1 million patients in the US, then we will have to have a partner to do the marketing. Right. So it depends on the indication. From the manufacturing point of view, our facility can support up to 150,000 doses of PLX cells or 150,000 treatment. So we can support the marketing, and the idea here is that for selected application, we'll do it by ourselves. Right. For larger application, we'll, we'll use the pharma companies and distributors, and that's one of the reasons I'm here around to talk to pharma companies. Right. Okay. And so, you know, what is the sort of the timelines on the on these programs? Uh, we believe that in 2018, which is two two and a half years down the road, we'll have the first product approved for right. marketing in Europe and Japan. Yeah. And the later on followed in the US. Right, okay. And what are the sort of the, the sort of the challenges though you still you know uh, think you face with, with as, as you started in the beginning, the stem cells is in the shadow. Yeah. So we have to bring the evidence that can pop it up back to the center of the stage and uh, to be effective and uh, useful for many indications, that's our duty and we have to do it. Right, okay. And the, the 17 million dollars that you raised, you sort of said that, okay, it's to you know, sort of continue with these sort of the clinical programs you already have in place, but also you're looking to sort of develop new uh, programs. So have you already sort of identified the sort of the targets? I think that the idea behind raising money is you do when you can, you yeah. do raise money when you can. And now we have enough capital to fund the company for more than 10 years, right. more than two years, sorry. And we believe that in, during those two years we'll bring a lot of uh, new uh, point, right. which will be a reflection point, uh, deflection point for the company, yeah. and it uh, will uh, improve the visibility and the awareness to the stem cell giving. Okay, great. Well, Sammy, very, thanks very much for, for, for coming along and, and sharing the story with us. Thank you. Thank you.